Don't change that channel. You've landed on the right spot. This is Cigar Time. Like Welcome back. You had a whole week to come up with something. That's I just did it three seconds ago. I like that. Came up with that. Sounds I, I, just, I just came three seconds ago. It came to me like an inspiration from above. Oh my God. Don't change I used to that respect channel. you. <laughs> All right. Not in the morning, though. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Off to another brilliant start. Yeah, I am absolutely. taking control of this show now. Good luck. It's Thank about time. You. It's been two years. I know. <laughs> the lovely Miss T will tell us what we're doing today so that the rest of us will know. Today we are doing a blind taste test. And later Scott is going to let you know how you can participate as well at home. Nice. Are you guys ready? Yeah, yeah. yeah open the bag. Okay, I'm ready. Let's see what Uncle Max has for us today. Yo, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be... Uh, Interesting. I'm, I'm amazed you spent all this time not smoking and they're still alive. Oh, that looks like a good one. I'm, I'm losing like ground fast. There you go. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at the way he put the band on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. That's cute. Uh-oh. What are you thinking? Right. I know what this is. It says D It's white label and it says D yeah, on it. Davidoff. This must be a, a, a David Duff. <laughs> oh, I got Ooh, a Maduro. That one looks good. Well, this smells good. Oh, I want it down one. I got a puny cigar. I heard that about I it. I got a puny cigar. <laughs> That's what you're calling it now? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think we should spend the next 15, or, my elbow. The next 15 or 20 minutes sitting here admiring the cigar. and. Uh, I would really I like, like to smoke one already. Can I? Trade yeah. yeah. All right, right. Let's right. smoke them. Can we uh, cut and light it? That's fun, okay. yeah. Uh, to remind you, everybody, we are cutting them uh, and lighting our cigars with the official lighter of Cigar Time, uh, Zycar. Thank you, Zycar, for the... Beautiful cutters and lighters. Mine's purple. What kind of lighter is it again? Yeah, it's the Illum lighter from Zycar. Very nice. With a huge tank. Very nice tank. Small, <laughs> it's light. Lots hey, of that colors. was kind of funny, huge tank. <laughs> I was kind of skeptical about an orange lighter, but that's... I, everybody wants the orange lighter. Flyers. Flyers, baby. Well, what's the white one? Eagles. Sixer. Six. Oh, don't even talk about the Sixers. I won't. Please don't. I couldn't. Rob's an aficionado of yeah. basketball. I think they're doing it on purpose. Philadelphia 76ers, they still have a team? I, it makes no sense what's going on. If you held a gun to my head and named one Sixer, I couldn't do it. I couldn't either. I could. If I held a gun to your head, I'd be the happiest man on earth. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> uh, this is nice. What are we doing today? I, uh, I think we should probably have Paul expound on some wisdom that he is uh, prepared for us. Wisdom. I'm heading to Connecticut today. Goodbye. Right. Now, actually, highlight? you know, we've, we've talked about Connecticut tobacco a little bit in the past, but we also talked a lot about um, the history of different countries and the tobacco that they grow there, and I just thought that Connecticut deserved that kind of examination, too. So I want to tell you a little bit about the history of tobacco in Connecticut. Um, when the first settlers came to Connecticut in 1630, there was already tobacco being grown there, and the Indians were smoking it on a regular basis. Did or the, you, the Native did, Americans. Did you agree Stop. Them? Stop. It's, it's Indians. It's Indians. Oh, okay. come on. Native did you, were you there it's to Indians. greet them? No, but I smoked some of their old, old, old tobacco. Were they Dutch? No, that came later. That I'm going to talk later? about that okay. in a second. Right. By 1700, uh, tobacco was already a major cash crop for Connecticut, and they were exporting it to Europe. Uh, in the 1820s and 30s, they began growing tobacco specifically for cigars, and they actually grew three different kinds, uh, two of which you've probably heard of. Uh, one is broadleaf. Connecticut broadleaf is still widely used today. Uh, they actually grew a Cuban seed tobacco called Habano, mm -hmm. not too surprising. And the third kind was called shoestring. And I have hunted and I have not been able to find shoestring tobacco anywhere. I think they make potatoes out of them now. <laughs> Shoestring potatoes? Shoestring tobacco? I've never heard of that. Um, That's no, a, it's a I, breed I of, of wrapper that they used to grow in Connecticut. Not if you're making it up. Well. <laughs> I never heard of it. Ark's never heard of it. We do this show on a no, never mind. Shoestring budget, right? <laughs> on a shoestring, yeah. Um, you're, over, you're grossly overrating it. <laughs> One shoestring. Um, Sandals. Can't in, we, in we, the, in we the can't late, even afford good vodka. 
It almost tastes, it almost tastes like water. Almost. <laughs> water on the rocks. Actually, though, in uh, the late 1800s, everything changed because at, at that point, tobacco was already the number one uh, revenue generator from an agricultural standpoint in the whole state. Uh, and all of a sudden, really in one shot, everybody in the industry stopped using Connecticut wrappers and started using an Indonesian wrapper that the Dutch, of course, the Dutch were always the ones doing this, that the Dutch brought in. And uh, Connecticut as a, as a state undertook a, a massive effort to try to figure out how they could compete with the Indonesian wrappers. And the state government actually formed a, a new company whose sole job was to try to figure out how to breed new tobacco that could compete. Uh, and what they finally figured out was that what people liked so much about the Indonesian wrapper was that it was very thin. The, v the veins in it were really fine, so it was kind of a, a very smooth looking uniform wrapper. Wouldn't it have a tendency to crack that? Uh. So thin? Well, yeah, and they replicated that part of it, too. <laughs> Thinner than Cameroon? Um, just about that yeah. thin. My guess is, though, that the time frame we're talking about, the appearance of the cigars probably wasn't as critical that's true. as it you're is right. today. Yeah. Well, that's when it became critical. When they brought in the Indonesian wrapper, which was totally uniform and completely smooth and looked veinless, uh -huh. everybody jumped all over that, and they loved it. Um, in 1900, they finally figured out the solution to the problem, and their solution was to plant tobacco under a tent. And the... Cigars are part of your face. Uh, but yeah, but I'm doing my one ounce curls, <laughs> which, <laughs> which I do a thousand times a day. Um, they planted tobacco under a tent, and the initial experiment was actually like a, a quarter of an acre. It was, it was a, a little, a fairly small tent. Right. And they planted... Indonesian seeds, believe it or not. Was Omar, did he make the tent? Omar the tent, tent maker? maker? No, I think we're going to meet with Omar to buy my next, from him. next week. <laughs> he used to buy your clothes from Omar the tent maker. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> well, I've thinned out. I'm just yeah, sitting here he trying have to, to figure out what this is. I think I know. I have a anyway, um, I think I know. it was an immediate success. By planting it under the tent, what they found is that it dissipated the sunlight enough and kept it uniform enough so that the tobacco grew with a beautiful yellow shade to it, like a honey yellow. The veins were virtually invisible. And Connecticut shade tobacco, as we know it, was born. Uh, over the next 25 or so years, that became such a big business in Connecticut that over 34,000 acres of land were under tents in Connecticut growing tobacco. In those tents, I'm sure you weren't there, but we can ask Max. Were they tents like cheesecloth tents like they are now? Yes. Or, okay, well, yeah. that's what they use. And, like and in fact, that part of how they do things has not changed in 100 years. Okay. Wow. They, they have really changed nothing about it. But it, it, it's funny, during the, I, I'll have to get a copy to put on, on screen later, but uh, in the course of researching this, I got a look at the initial actual written report from the Connecticut Tobacco Development Company, which is the company that was formed by the state, their written report to the governor about what they were doing and how it worked. And it's like a 60-page document. Wow. It's, it was really kind of cool. Um, tobacco development in Connecticut was basically um, frozen in place by the institution of child labor laws in America. Uh, because virtually all of the people that were cultivating and, and picking that tobacco were school-age kids. Wow. And uh, yeah. they weren't getting paid much, but it was good for business uh, until the law changed. Today, as a result, even though that wrapper is still by far the most popular wrapper in the United States, uh, the acreage has shrunk from over 34,000 to under 2,000 acres in the wow. whole state. Yeah. Um, but just to give you an idea of why, um, to cultivate and uh, harvest an acre of tobacco in Connecticut cost about $30,000. 
And when you're all done, you will get about a thousand pounds of tobacco. And a thousand pounds of really primo wrapper from Connecticut will net you in the marketplace between twenty-eight and thirty-five dollars a pound. I'm making much money yeah, on that. Which yeah, which yeah, means yeah. which means you're either losing two or three thousand dollars per acre, or you're making five dollars. Right. You know, five five thousand. How much? Yeah. So there's there's virtually no money in it, That's which is funny. why no, and and it's all labor cost. But it is extremely good tobacco. It's fantastic. Yeah, tobacco. great tobacco. Yeah. So that's the story with Connecticut wrapper. That's interesting. Well, well that was very enlightening. Uh, so now I know why the, the Connecticut Connecticut tobacco <coughs> is so much more expensive. Uh, right. And like, well, like it, for it, Ashton, you, you know that uh, growing tobacco is a very labor-intensive process. Right. And somehow labor is less expensive in places like Honduras <laughs> and Nicaragua. <laughs> Just a yeah, little. Like a little bit. Just a little. Um, and, and even if they got rid of the child labor laws, even if they still had kids doing it here, it would be way more expensive. And besides, housing developments and strip malls are a much bigger return on the acreage yeah, than a tobacco yeah. farm. Yeah. That's I why... Have a question. Yeah. Go ahead, Scott. Uh, you mentioned when they started growing it under the cheesecloth that it wasn't as veiny. Yeah. What I understand the the cheesecloth filtering the sun and making it a smooth, more supple wrapper, but I wonder, do you know the science behind why it affected the veins? Yeah, it's all about nutrients. And when uh, a leaf on a plant gets more direct sun, it generates more nutrients and it grows bigger veins to carry those nutrients around. Ah. Plants are much more adaptive than we realize. So. If you allow a plant to produce a lot of nutrient, it's going to produce a bigger vein to pump that stuff through and move it around within the plant. Interesting. That is that's kind of cool. I never, yeah, it, you know what? Now that you mentioned it, it makes perfect sense. And you have your doctorate in agriculture? No. no okay. when, when was the progression of the lesser acres? In other words, it let's started say in 30 the years ago. It started in the 40s. All right, well, how would you estimate like 30 or 40 years ago? You know, there are 2,000 now, correct? 2,000 acres. What would they have been 30 or 40? And there's a reason I'm asking this question. Uh, 30 or 40 years ago, probably about 15,000. It, okay. it was already shrinking. The reason I ask is the General Cigar Company, which owned a lot of that acreage. And they still, still do. Still do, right. I understand that. But back then, the early runs of Macanudo had the most beautiful brown wrappers on them that you could even imagine. Now today you only see those wrappers on, on their presentation of I believe the Macanoodle, Macanoodle gold. gold. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean these are if, if you're ever in a cigar store and whether you smoke Macanoodle or it's Macanoodle gold, which is a totally different taste and strength, take a look at the wrappers on Macanoodle gold and you'll yeah. see yeah. how beautiful wrappers you know there could be because these are just gorgeous, gorgeous wrappers. I just want to point out one thing that to me is particularly interesting about all of this and that it's although we talk about Cuban seed tobacco all the time it's the Dutch and the Indonesian seeds that have really pioneered almost everything in the leaf growing Grow, side yeah. of this business yeah. uh, it was Dutch Indonesian seeds that were planted in Cameroon to come up with Cameroon mm -hmm. wrapper it was Dutch Indonesian seeds in Connecticut to make the Connecticut wrapper that we know today. Um, a combination of Indonesian and Cameroon seeds is what yields one of the hottest wrappers around, which is uh, Ecuadorian Sumatra. Mm -hmm. um, it's all Dutch Indonesian seed. Wow. Amazing. They were real, real pioneers in this. Another country starting to experiment more with, was it China? I've read about this. Somebody's experimenting more with growing their own tobacco and making their own cigars. I heard, I heard that. China is doing it. India is doing it to a certain extent. But uh, I've, I've had the dubious pleasure of tasting uh, Indian cigar tobacco, and it's truly, truly horrific. Well, I actually, <laughs> I've had... You uh, just say horrific, not terrific. Horrific. <coughs> horrific. I was horrified. Several years ago, uh, my father went to uh, China for like a month and brought back like a 10 pack of Corona cigars and I agree they, they, this was Chinese tobacco and they were horrible. Well, guess, years what? Ago, so. guess what? There's a renaissance of Chinese tobacco now. 
I mean, they're planting thousands and thousands of acres and producing many, many cigars over there. Mm -hmm. You're going to see Chinese cigars in this country before not too long. And yeah, I think you will. And, and if you no think French. about it, given given how much of a good cigar is tied up in labor, uh, maybe the only place in the world where you can have labor that's cheaper than Honduras. And the only reason I would like a would Chinese China. cigar. I have some beautiful porcelain chopsticks that I can use as a cigar holder. I would like to see you smoke a cigar holding it in chopsticks. I'd I can be, pick, I'd up, be a, really I can pick up a single grain of rice. Why can't I smoke a cigar? A cigar's a little heavier. It might be hard to balance. No, I have, should we go with the obvious joke? Maybe hard to commit. Like, I'd, I'd have one, and I'd feel like I'd, I'd, I'd need I'd one have, a half I'd hour later. Half well, I'd feel that way anyway. <laughs> what a setup. Yeah. <laughs> I might uh, as well be at, smoking at a least Chinese I, cigar. At least I said the, the obvious joke. It's the obvious. All right, well, I think we should maybe get some first comments. We don't have to say what we think it is at this point, but maybe we should get some comments about what you're talking about. Good, because I have no idea what this is. Really? No clue at all. No, I mean, the brand. I mean, I think I know what the wrapper is and fillers, but... Well, say something about it. I, I think it's a, it looks to me like an Ecuadorian uh, Habana wrapper, Paul's favorite, I'm sure. A um, little spice on the retro hail. Um, that's what I'll go with for now. Paul? Well, as you can see, I got a Maduro, and it's a very, very dark Maduro, and I thought that it might suffer from tasting like it was treated, because it looks that way, but it doesn't have that kind of taste at all. It's a very, very mild, really mild Maduro. Yeah, I'm not getting the aroma you get from the treated wrappers from, I don't smell it from theirs. Nope. Um, it's got just a touch of that Maduro sweetness, but no spice at all. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, for me, it's not especially a good yeah, thing. Yeah, you like spicy, I know that. Tea? Um, I think I have a Nicaraguan Habano because of the way the wrapper is, and it's spicy. As soon as I lit it up, it was very spicy, but then it mellowed out. I have an idea of what I think this would be, so it's pretty tasty. It's not really what I like is more what you like, Paul. I think we got the wrong cigar. <laughs> what do you, uh, well, why don't you swap? <laughs> On that one, what do you think the binder is? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. Rob? Um, this is a mildly spicy cigar. It's a medium bodied cigar. It's box pressed. Um, it looks like it has a, a Nicaraguan wrapper. It's It's... It's very spicy, not very spicy, mildly spicy, but it's got a lot of oak and wood taste to it uh, on the retro hail. I like it. It's going to be, uh, um, it's starting to get a little complicated. Um, complex, I should say, not complicated. It's, say complicated. it's not complicated, it's complex. That's fight what I'm saying. Yeah, we've been fighting with it. I'm going to fight with it. I really like the band. Did you say earlier this band, your first radio? Nice. I'm is. surprised you didn't remark about the band. Oh, the band is gorgeous. Yeah. I have I'm A. Sorry. I have A because I'm the best. Yeah, I'm smoking E. Yeah. <laughs> You're elegant. I'm elegant. Or effervescent. Yeah, more effervescent. What's A for? Well, I, I have D, which would awesome. easily be mistaken for a dog, but it's not. It's anything but a dog. It's very, I have no clue what this is. I know what the wrapper is, too, but and, and it's burning like a Cuban. Nice, dirty ash. Mm -hmm. Nice, dirty Honestly, ash and a nice, oily wrapper. This, right. did, this didn't come from the Dominican Republic. No. I know mm -hmm. that. That's a very tasty cigar. A little bit of spice, a little bit of sweet finish. Nice, nice on the retro hail. It's a decent cigar. Shall we go into our next topic? Yes, we should. Uh, okay. Sure. And today we're going to tell you individually who we'd like to have a cigar with. Who we'd like to sit down and enjoy a cigar. Other we'll than Misty. Oh, thank uh, you. Yeah. Other than you. Other than you guys. Yeah, other than us guys. Oh. Yeah. So who would like to take I'll the lead on this? I'll go first. All right, ladies first. Again, you can't take mine. I'm not taking yours. I'm sure no one's going to pick None this. of you are going to get mine. I would like to sit down with Charlie Sheen. I've been in love with him since the <laughs> early you 90s. You stole mine. <laughs> really? What? Really? I, I really can't did. believe I can't believe <laughs> Of all the wow. people in the world, he's Charlie really? Sheen. Wow. wow. No, because he's... Well, I'll, I'll talk he's about so, why later, but you go He's so cool. Ahead. You know, he Bad always boy. He pairs it right, you know? And um, like I said, I've been in love with him since the early 90s, and, you know, this would be a good sit-down conversation, you know, piece. I want, I want to meet Charlie Sheen instead and smoke a cigar with him. Wow. Scott? I love him. He's sexy. I'm going to jump back and forth. Okay. Change um, it up a little bit. I will pick uh, William Lieb, who, who? is my... 
William Lieb. William Lieb. Don't you know who William uh, Lieb is? I know who William Lieb is. I of course have no I idea. I who William William absolutely do. Yes, I absolutely who know who it is. It's your grandfather. It's my grandfather. See? That's right. Aww. Yeah. Uh, now, my grandfather passed away about 20 years ago. And unfortunately, he was a big, big cigar smoker. I mean, he was always smoking. He would sit. I used to tell him Garcia Vega. I remember. He probably did. Uh, he would sit in the he would sit in the basement, you know, during the holidays, and he'd play his his electric organ, and and the whole the whole nice. room would smell like cigars. Nice. nice. And I know for for a while he he smoked, as I remember, like a Phillies and stuff. But and his as he aged, he started smoking the Don Tomas. Oh. And, um, okay. I never got a chance. I, I didn't get into cigars till after he was gone. Uh. And. Um, so I would have loved to have had a chance to share that with him because it was it was a huge, huge, huge part of his life, um, and I actually still have I think three of uh, like three or four of his last cigars sitting oh, in my humidor, nice. which I probably really can cool. never smoke. No, no, no don't ever smoke. Yeah. yeah. Did you get into it because of your grandfather? Um, no, it wasn't because of him, um, but I, I remember you know. I think he he knew I started to get into it, and he was I know he was ecstatic about this, but I just. We never had a chance to sit down and, and have one. That's a shame. Yeah. yeah. That's a shame. I'll, I'll, I'll stall for you Bring to rethink. Bring the mood all the way down, Scott. Rob? Yeah. <laughs> Rob's, t like, Rob's all glassy-eyed. Look at that. Yeah, right. I, I wipe my tear out of my eye. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Putting the show down. <laughs> God. Um, mine would be uh, John F. Kennedy. Oh, that's a good Big one. Big cigar smoker. Um, Small cigars. Small, Small cigars. cigars Corona-sized cigars. Um, I just I think he would be fascinating to sit and oh, talk yeah. with. Uh, cigars, women, politics, ballistic, um, Maryland, Maryland, yeah. ballistics. sports. I mean, <laughs> ballistics. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. But yeah, I think he would be extremely interesting to sit and talk I can't to. Can't believe I said so. That. That's my guy. Okay. You're well, uh, you know what? I'm going to stick to my guns, but for different reasons. Since I don't, I was never in love with him. <laughs> Um, Till now. I forgot to add, did he pay you rent? Yes. <laughs> oh, cool. Then I can understand. But uh, there was an episode of Two and a Half Men where Charlie Sheen was hanging out at his house with Sean Penn and Elvis Costello. What a combination. And the three of them were drinking scotch and smoking cigars. And I just looked at that assemblage of oddball characters and I thought, man, if I was sitting there smoking and drinking with them, I would not stop laughing. The whole time, yeah. and that just—it just seemed like it would be way too much fun to pass up on. You get that here. That's, that's well. True. That's why I come in every day. Okay. Yeah. Is it my turn? Good reason. It is yes. your turn. Well, I, I, I've got another bad boy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mine would be Jack Nicholson. Nice. Oh, perfect yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, you two together. I never that met him. Never good. spoke to him. And 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 he's a cool cigar smoker. He's had a very interesting life. You're all familiar with his total life. Certainly, he's had a, uh, a, a film career that spanned many generations now. And uh, talk about bad boys, you know. One of the originals. He's one of the originals yeah. bad, of the modern bad boys. But I think it would be very, I, I've always thought he was a cool guy. You know, I love his movies. I love his acting. Some of his personal stuff, maybe not. But, you know, that, that's another story. Yeah, he likes basketball. Yeah, he does like basketball. Lakers, yeah. Yeah. Always Court side at the Lakers. Lakers. But I, I think he's a real cool guy. So yeah. let's move on. Well, I, now that you mentioned that, I can think of a bunch of other people. Oh, yeah. I, I would, well, JFK. Save it for would, another show. Yeah, that was a good one. I thought that was a good one. That was a really good one. Churchill. Well, no, I'm surprised nobody said Winston Churchill. It just shows you. Amazing. All right, what are we doing next? Should we talk about our cigar? Yeah, I guess we talk about them more and rate them. Okay. I'm not going first. I'll go, <laughs> I'll I'll go first. first. Wait, first are we going to say what we think it is or just talk about it? Really? You can say what you think you it is. Say what you think. We're all going to be right. All right. What's the difference? I think mine... <laughs> Hey, I was kind of right. I was, I was kind of right before. Well, you were in the right church, weren't you? I think um, After you I opened the envelope. Cheated. After you yeah. 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 Open the envelope. I yeah. did. Yeah. Open the envelope look. and then guess. Not. I did not there look was, there, at the there envelope. There was no shortage of people ready to dime you right out. That's right. I did not look. I swear. Remember, I was the, right. I was the only one that didn't say anything. It's on camera. We will go back. We will go back and you will see that you opened the envelope. I opened it, but I didn't look. Okay. Okay. You guys were like peeking. 
Yes, I'm going to work on that. All right. Yeah, I was right. Next. Um, I'm going with either an Upman or, yeah, I'm staying with an Upman. Rob? I believe it's an Upman. I think this is a floor less day on TS. Hey, hey, hey. You got box press. I box think it's down. No, it's, it's too hard of a box it's too press. Thin no, too. Not, I, 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 the color's not, so. the wrapper's not. That is not. Yeah, the Antillus is not that uh -huh. square. I'm telling you. Scott? I'm going with a Rob um, and a I, I think I, I have no idea what this is. I can tell you, I think it's an Ecuadorian Habana wrapper and a Honduran filler, um, and it's an okay cigar. I, 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 I have no idea what it is. Mine's really good. Paul? It's really spicy. I'm not going to even hazard a guess about what it is. I'm just going to tell you that it is a classically mild Maduro. I can. It's smooth. Looks it's got some flavor. Um, I mean, I could guess, but I would just be guessing. What are you thinking? Well, is uh, his, looks, his looks like an Ashton Maduro. That I was thinking be. like a, think a number 40. It could right. be. Yeah. I don't think, I don't I think know. yours is a Padron. Yours looks like, to me, look one of those Padron carbon copies. No. 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 The other, the other yes, one I, would th I thought it would be would be the um, the new one, the uh, the New World. No. Is it no. my turn? No. It's not, it's not oh, dark enough or fat enough. I don't know what, I don't have a clue what this is, but it's very tasty. Has a nice sweet finish, although it's getting a little sweeter as I taste it. A little hint of spice on the back of the tongue, and uh, whatever it is, it's very yummy. Uh, Scott, so why, why? I was gonna say, why? Are we, why are we even talking? Why about are we it. doing this? Well, I think it's time for you. Our I'll pass the baton. Tell the people what they can get. We thought this would be a cool idea for. We don't. We don't know what these cigars are. Uh, we are not going to tell you what they are. Because we don't know. I hope. Hopefully, we're Uncle Max. Uncle Max. Max. Hopefully, we're going to find Max. You could probably bribe him. Exactly. Uh, can bribe but Max. we are. We're all these uh, five cigars are going to be available in all of our stores, um, right after the show, and that's how you're going to find out what the what the cigars are. The retail value of this is forty three dollars. Um, and it comes with a stay fresh pack, which you can use over and over. Um, It'll last up to a year. Is that right? A year? Okay. Yeah. 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 Fresh Aaron for a year. Yeah. Aaron yeah. Aaron yeah. Aaron yeah. Um, so the retail, the, uh, the retail suggested price is $43. These five cigars in the bag are yours for $29.95. Wow. Cool. And you can and use the bag. They're going to know yeah. what they're and getting. Then, and then you'll find out what the cigars are. You'll exactly. find out what right. they are. And they're all major cigars. There's not. There's no Don Nobody's in there. At least I hope. Wait, so they'll find out. Yeah, when I was going to say we, we don't. We don't. How do you know? We don't know. They'll but find I'm, out when. Knowing they Max, they're good cigars. That's part. Part of me. I'm sick. Of, all right. Fine. Okay. Eight well, dollar we've uh, we've arrived at that time of the show, which goes good. by way way too fast. Wow. And we have to bid adieu. To use an old friend. I'll go. Bye bye for now. Ciao for now, everybody. We almost forgot. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh, happy, oh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah. happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Life's right. too short to smoke cheap cigars. Hi, Mom. Hope I didn't make you cry. Oh. That's, that's <laughs> our smoke dad. Smoke often and smoke happy, everybody. You don't care that you made me cry. That's, that's <laughs> no, okay. <I> think. <laughs> well, on behalf of the entire Cigar Time crew, our studio audience, our technicians, our camera people, sound people. Photographer. 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 Thanks, and, Becky. Uh, Thanks the FedEx guy. producer that's falling asleep. And everybody at the uh, Cigar Cigar family, we wish you a very, very happy and, and fruitful Thanksgiving. And please join us next week when... Mm -hmm.